Hey mamas, today I'm gonna to be sharing all the math curriculum resources and activities that we use with our kindergartner. Let's get into it. For our main math curriculum, we are currently using Singapore Dimensions Math level KA and KB. This particular brand of curriculum is the very first one that I purchased for my first grader when we first started homeschooling and it has served us so well. So I really lucked out <laughs> with that first curriculum choice that I made. It's very, very straightforward as far as the sequencing of things and in the very, very beginning of the book, as with most curriculum, you're gonna see um, all the scope and sequence of everything that they're going to cover in each of the chapters. So it is broken down in chapters and there are a certain number of uh, lessons that you will go through with your child in each chapter. If you buy the set of this curriculum, it includes both textbooks, workbooks, and teacher's manuals for each of those levels. But I was finding that when I did this with my first grader, we really didn't need that teacher's manual. So I decided not to get it this time around. And honestly, this curriculum is so open and go that I just found I really didn't need it. The other thing I like about this is that the images are interesting and colorful, but they're not distracting for the kids and they're very simple. The other thing is that these characters that you see, they will pop up again and again throughout each of the books. And I think if I'm remembering correctly, they're also the same for level one and like 1A, 1B and level 2A and 2B. The only drawback to this curriculum is that it does not include its own manipulatives and I know a lot of others do come with that. So if I had to critique it, that would be the one thing I would say about it. So this is the workbook. It's pretty much the same as the textbook and it does have the chapters I think at the beginning so they have chapter one and instead of breaking it up as lessons it just breaks it up between exercises so exercises one two three four five six seven this was such a great way for my daughter to practice all of the concepts that she was learning then for the KB textbook it's pretty much the same deal it just has more advanced concepts in here so the kids are getting into place values numbers to 20 number bonds, those types of things. Next, we have a book called Building Thinking Skills, and this cuts across a lot of different subjects and skills. So in the very front cover, they tell you all the things that the child will go through and practice, so similarities and differences, classification, describing analogies, all kinds of things here and I really like this because it's diverse in terms of the things that they cover but it really does build um, critical thinking for the kids as they go along and in the beginning of the book what was really fun or has been fun for my kindergartner is using attribute blocks so this is something that is such a great manipulative and you can do a lot of different activities with these outside of this curriculum but it's just it's so fun for my daughter to learn about different attributes as far as shapes goes so for example this um, activity had her finding the actual shape so she practiced already writing and reading um, the different colors and the sizes and the names of the shapes and so she had to find the shape put it on the page trace it and color it so I just I love things like that for her to do and she really really does enjoy it for each chapter at the beginning of the chapters they tell you exactly what they're doing and the scope and sequence of the chapter later on in the book they do get into things like characteristics of people and families and then people in the community, also animals, things like that. So like I said, this really does cut across a number of different topics and subjects, but all aiming to build those th critical thinking skills. For these attribute shapes, they come in five different shapes. So hexagons, triangles, squares, circles, and rectangles. And then you'll notice they're different colors. They're also varied between thickness. So this is thick and this one is thin. And then we have small shapes and, I'm sorry, then we have small shapes and 
large shapes. Then we have this supplement, which is Mind Benders. It's just a fun puzzle book. So they give the child a grid, a three by three grid, and they give them different clues to read. Or honestly, for my kindergartner, she's not at the point where she can read this by herself. So I will read this with her. Then she uses deductive reasoning to figure out which one belongs with which. So for instance, this boy has this dog. Okay, now on to some of the activities that we do for math. This first one is actually one that I showed in a previous video, so if you haven't seen that, you can watch that. It's all about how to create hands-on activities for your kids. And this one is all about number bonds. So what I did was I just created different patterns for her. So in one color, in another color, and then she has to figure out what the total is. So in this case, it's a six, and then she has three and three. So that makes the number bond, and that matches the card. So this is a really simple activity for her to do to practice those number bonds. Then we have a money count activity. I started her off on this activity to practice not only just her sense, like the values of each of these different coins, but also to practice her knowledge of place values and adding different numbers to 20. So she was learning how to do 10 and two make 12, things like that. So the first thing I taught her was the dime, which is worth 10 cents. So I would always give her one dime, she would write 10 here, and then I wouldn't give her any nickels or quarters. And I would also give her pennies, and then she would count the two and add it up. Now we've moved to nickels. Same thing, I just taught her that this is worth five. So you can say five or five cents. So right now what she does is she'll match up the nickel and count on from five, depending on how many pennies she has. So for this one, it would be five, six, seven, eight, and then she would write that down here. This activity was free online and I will link it below for you. And this is, it's so cute. It has two different sides. So it has one where the child will match up the different cookies. So each of these cookies have different numbers of chocolate chips in them. And they will just match it up depending on how many chocolate chips they see. So these are, this is the number side, and then we have the number word side. So this is one that I like her to practice because I want her to memorize these words and that's something that her curriculum also goes through. So this is good practice for her for that. This next item is Montessori specific. So we have a Seguin board, two Seguin boards, and these are for the numbers up to 19 and then 20, and then we have the numbers from 10 to 90 over there. So what I have my daughter do with this is I made these little cards for her to practice numbers to 20. And what she does is she gets the card, so 10 and one, and then she uses Montessori beads. So this is another thing that we like to use for this activity and other activities. And so then she'll put this here. So this is 10 and one, so she can count that out. And then she goes ahead and finds that number one and slides it into place. So that's such a great visual and hands-on way for her to practice seeing how the tens and ones come together and how that makes 11. This next activity is super straightforward. It's a say it, make it, write it activity. And this is great for so many different things. In fact, I mentioned it in my last video about kindergarten reading curriculum and, and activities. So essentially with this particular one, I created these little cards that have all the different numbers on it. I laminated it. So what she does is I will give this to her and I will either put this on her shelf and she can grab it herself when she wants to practice or I put it on her table when she comes down in the morning for morning work. And so she has the different numbers there. And then we have these different tens and ones. They're very, they're magnetic. So that is really cool. We can use it for different things. She makes it, so she has a 10 and seven, which makes 17. And then she writes the actual number word down here. This next activity is a fun one. It's a roll and count activity essentially, but it also has the child do some extra things. So we have number bonds on that side. 
the actual number that the child will write, the word if you have them writing that, and tally, which is not something that I'm, I have gone through with my daughter yet, but when we do that, this is something that she will put in there as well. So really simple, a child will roll the dice. So for instance, we have five and six here, and so she will go ahead and fill out that number bond. Now, I have had her do it just with a marker and writing it out in the past, but I like this because it's very hands-on this way. So these are just bottle caps with the numbers written on them. And this is an idea that I got from JDA. And then I have these cards that have the different numbers on them as well as the number words. So she would find the right one and write down the number word here and then the number. So this, again, she could use her marker or actual number magnets, which these are fantastic. I actually pull these out to play with um, my toddler. And then we have a little nest here. So this actually was used for a dinosaur unit that I did a while ago. And I actually did laminate and cut out some dinosaur eggs, but just for this activity, just to kind of keep it really simple, I use these glass beads for them to add their little eggs in here. Then I have a 10 frame here on the bottom, so my daughter will just take some Unifix cubes, which I absolutely love for math, they're so versatile. So she will go ahead and put these on to fill it out so that she can see what this actually looks like in the 10 frame. Next, I have these tan gram pattern blocks. Our curriculum does make use of these blocks and that was part of the reason why I bought it. I also purchased it because I really like how you can do different patterns, so it really helps the child to practice their patterns and also really get to know all the different shapes and how the different shapes can be manipulated to create a picture. And so for this activity in particular with her curriculum, she is not only putting in the different shapes to match this image, but she's also writing the number of shapes she used to create this. And then we have these cards that I, I'm trying to remember if I purchased this separately, from these shapes, but this is great because they can create all kinds of different images with this. I could also extend this activity to do something like this where I would just put the shape here and I would have her write in the number of shapes that she used to create this. So that's a way that I can have her practice with these tan gram blocks as well. Next I have these logic puzzles that are really fun for my daughter to do. And essentially this first one is a lot like Tetris. So she has all these different shapes and pieces and the goal is that she fills out this entire board with all of the shapes. So it's a really fun, challenging logic puzzle. And I believe the skill that she is practicing with these puzzles is spatial reasoning. Same deal here, this is just working with hexagonal pieces. So, she will aim to try to fill out this whole thing with all of these different pieces. Thank you so much for joining me today, mamas. I hope you found this video helpful. Take care, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.